Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Honeybee Stamps. In this video, we are going to watercolor die cuts from the A Little Spooky Honey Cut set to create this really fun, spooky Halloween scene. Let's start out with the A Little Spooky Honey Cut set. I'm going to pull off several dies from this set, but there are a ton here. I didn't use them all, and I can't wait to create more cards, with especially the crystal ball and that creepy kind of witch hand. Really fun images. We're going to die cut them out of Bristol paper. We're using the smooth. Bristol comes in two forms, either smooth or vellum. Either would really work, but I do prefer the smooth. So I went, and cut, went ahead and die cut all of my images out, and now we're going to start to watercolor them with Distress inks. I'm going to smush out my colors here on to my palette. I'm using a stencil mat and then I'm going to spritz some water down onto my work surface and just get my brush a little damp and then go over to that ink, pick it up and that will just activate that ink, make it a little bit more runny and then I can start painting with it. I'm going to paint first on this skull the eye cavities and the nose cavity just a simple black with that black soot distress ink. These are um, tiny, so you might find a small paintbrush to work a little bit better for you. I'm actually using a number four round and it works fine for me because it comes to a, you know, a fine point. I now watered down that black soot so it's kind of gray and added some shadows here and there to the skull. I am kind of using the lines that the dye creates, the details the dye creates as kind of a guide of where to color. After I added some of that black, I'm going to now go to the scattered straw and just kind of add a little bit of this yellow to kind of age the skull um, up a little bit. And then I'm going to also add a little bit of the tea dye to do the exact same thing, just to kind of make this skull look a little bit more distressed. Now we're going to move on to the bone and basically repeat the process. Start with black here, add a little bit to the sides, just kind of get some of that dark color in, and then move on to the uh, scattered straw and then the tea dye just to kind of add some age and some discoloration to these bones. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the um, cauldron. <laughs> I forgot what it was called for a second there. I'm going to start with chipped sapphire here and just kind of paint the belly of the cauldron a little bit with that chipped sapphire. And then I'll move on to the black soot and start painting all of the sides, the top and the sides and the bottom with this black soot. We're going to kind of blend this all in after I get it down to kind of create a nice gradation so the belly of the um, cauldron is a little bit lighter so it kind of really creates that illusion of roundness but first I got to build up my black and make it really nice and dark so I'm kind of adding even more here I do want to emphasize um, I don't use a lot of water you don't have to use a lot of water to watercolor with distress inks just a little bit will go a long way to get those inks to move and then I did finish it with a little bit of ground espresso to add some nice brown color so it looks a little worn and used now we're going to move on to this a raven or a crow. I'm going to paint it first with chip sapphire again. So the same blue we used on the cauldron. I'm just going to paint the whole bird with this chip sapphire except for the beak and the legs. We will color those in with the black soot um, watered down so they look gray later. Now I'm moving on to the black soot and I'm just adding in some darker areas with this black. So this really gives that black color to the raven and you have that blue highlight from the chipped sapphire so it looks beautiful. Now I've watered down the black soot a little bit so it's more gray and just painted quickly the beak and the legs. Now we're going to move on to the branch that the bird is on. We're going to start with vintage photo and quickly paint kind of a base layer on this whole entire twig with the vintage photo. This is kind of our light. Once we get that down, we'll then move on to ground espresso and add kind of a shadow. So I'm adding a shadow to the underside of the branches and then to the right side as well, just to kind of give the illusion that this has more shape or some more roundness to it. And once we finish that, I'll do, I do add a little lines in for texture with that ground espresso, you know, just to kind of mimic wood grain or I guess bark rather, and then we're done with the raven. Now we're going to move on to this kind of uh, smoke coming out of the cauldron. I'm going to just color this two colors, starting first with peeled paint. Kind of do a base color here, base uh, applying of that. Leave some of the tips of the smoke uh, white, because I'm going to color them now with the fossilized amber just to kind of give this a uh, more of a gradation so the smoke looks more like it's moving and changing colors 
after I kind of blend that out, I'll then go back to the peeled paint and uh, with a little less water, so it's more concentrated, kind of color in or paint in some lines. I'm just following along the lines that the dye created on the paper. So I'm just using those as a guide, just kind of painting right over them to really add the swirls um, back into this really cool um, smoke for the cauldron. And once I finish that, and I'll also do it with the fossilized amber too, I'll kind of um, use more concentrated fossilized amber to add some of those swirl lines too. So now that we're done with that, we're going to move on to the candlestick holder. I'm going to start with fossilized amber and just add kind of a base layer with of this yellow over all of the candlestick holder itself. We will actually paint the candles later. I die cut those out with one with the dye. Now I'm using um, more concentrated fossilized amber to kind of add that more intense yellow to the sides of the candlestick holder just so again creating that illusion of roundness and shape to to the holder and then we're going to move on to even darker with the vintage photo just to add even more shadow and depth so this really has some dimension to it or, or it looks like it has dimension to it now that we finish that we're going to move on to these this stack of books so there are a lot of colors here because i'm going to be coloring um these books like almost each of them dif a different color. Starting with this bottom book here, we're using uh, barn door and then fired brick on the sides to create that illusion of a roundness on the spine. Now moving on to the next book, we're gonna use peeled paint first, just kind of create that base layer of peeled paint. And then I'll move on to a little bit of ground espresso to add those shadows on the sides to again, create that illusion of roundness and shape. Then we'll move on to uh, Seedless Preserves, I believe, for the next book here. I am doing a little cleanup, just kind of lightening that spine because it was getting a little dark. Oh, no, our next book is a very thin book, and this is going to be brown, starting with Vintage Photo and then a little bit of Ground Espresso. That's a very thin book there. And now we're moving on to Seedless Preserves. First, just painting the whole book with that beautiful purple. And then when we finish with that, I will grab some of that ground espresso again. You can see I'm using that a lot as my darker, just to kind of add to the top and the bottom of the spine, just to again, create that shape, that round shape to the spine. Now we're gonna move on to a yellow book, starting with fossilized amber as the base, and then using vintage photo on the top and bottom of the spine to again, create that roundness. Now there are actual details on these book spines which we will add later. I'm just going to put the get them colored and, and let them dry a little bit and then we'll add the details. Now for this next book we're back to a brown one so again going to use vintage photo as the base and then that ground espresso as my dark to to the top and bottom to create that shadow. And then we'll finish the last book which actually gets completely covered up but this last book will be um, Seedless Preserves and Ground Espresso again, just to, just to finish it up here. So now we're ready to kind of color in the details. I'm gonna start with that bottom book and I'm going back to Fired Brick and just coloring the best I can the details that the dye created on that spine. Um, this step could totally be skipped. If this seems intimidating to you, it's like too tiny and you're like, I can't do this or you can't, you're having a hard time seeing it, just skip the step. You don't have to do the details on this spine. Now I'm just gonna continue this process. I moved on to the green book and just mixed peeled paint and ground espresso again. And now I'm on my purple book. I'm using seedless preserves and ground espresso again, kind of mixed together to get like a darker color. And then I'll finish up well, I have two more books to color, this um, yellow one, which is Fossilized Amber and um, Vintage Photo Mix to kind of create that dark. And then this brown book is just going to be Ground Espresso to add those details on the spine. And after I color that, I'm actually all done with my books, just doing a little clean up here and there. Now we're going to move on to our last thing we have to color, which is these candlesticks. I'm going to make them red, so I'm going to start with Barn uh, barn door and quickly paint all three of the candles with this red color. This is going to be our base, so we're going to this is going to be basically our light. And then once I get that kind of base down, I'll then go back to the barn door and with a little less water, so it's more concentrated, kind of add in some of my darks and then add fired brick as my darkest dark just to kind of enhance the look of these candles. So it really looks like wax is kind of melted and dripping and they're been used and 
been lit for a while. After I finish that, I will move on to the flames themselves, starting with mustard seed and then finishing with a little bit of ripe persimmon to at the very base of the flame to really get that cool look. And then a little bit of black soot for the wick itself. And now I'm ready to kind of put these things together. We're gonna start by adhering some of our die cuts together. First, obviously, the candles to the candle holder. I'm just gonna glue them right on top. I could have painted the candles but on the candle holder, but the candles that I die cut have more detail, so I kind of liked that. I use that instead. I cut the bone at an angle, and I'm gonna add it into my cauldron with the smoke. So first I glued down to the smoke, now I'm adding my cut bone. And now we have basically all of our pieces adhered together, all the die cuts that we're gonna adhere together, adhered together. And now we're gonna quickly arrange our die cuts on an A2 top folding black card base turned on its side. I will then um, actually grab the stamp set that I'm using for my sentiment, which is the Hocus Pocus stamp set. I'm gonna grab this one here that says, have a spooky Halloween, which is very fitting, I think. Arrange it on, on my card front just so I can figure out where I want my die cuts to kind of go and where my sentiment is gonna go. And then once I get everything arranged the way I like it, I will then grab a piece of press and seal and pick up these die cuts. I then moved everything over to my Misty, kind of rearranged the uh, die cuts just so I could get the um, sentiment again in the right spot, picked the sentiment up with my Misty, moved my die cuts and the press and seal to the side. I will put those on after I stamp my sentiment. I'm going to heat emboss this so I did apply some anti-static powder, stamped my sentiment in Versamark, which is a water, uh, embossing and watermark um, ink, then uh, dipped it into some gold embossing powder and now heat setting with my heat tool. Now that my sentiment is done, I went ahead and added some foam adhesive to the back side of all of my die cuts that are on the press and seal, removed the backing on that foam adhesive, and now I'm just going to line these back up where I want them to go on that card front and then remove the press and seal and that will actually complete our card. I'll hold up to the camera here so you can get a good look at all these die cuts. There's lots of details on them. I think they turned out so great. This is actually a very easy process. Water coloring these is very simple. It may look intimidating, but because we're kind of going for a distress look, um, it's very forgiving. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If any uh, questions about the products I use, please check out the links below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.